All right, Pete, so I'm trying to help you out here. <laughs> I, I know you've had some struggles with your fantasy football in years past. So I'm I thought, supposed to be the expert. You're supposed to be the expert. In theory. So I got a real expert for you. Good. Kay Adams from the NFL Network. She is the co-host of Good Morning Football every morning on the NFL Network. Starts at 7 a.m. each morning. Kay, how are you doing today? I'm great. Good afternoon, guys. Almost my bedtime here on the East Coast. <laughs> Well, we won't, we won't keep you too long, okay? <laughs> so no, I'm happy to be here. So I first want to ask you about the new show. It's only been on for a few weeks. You know, what has it been like? I mean, this is obviously a something that's a little bit different for you and for the guys that you're working with. What has the experience been like for you to do a morning show like this on the NFL Network each day? It is a lot of fun, I have to say. Uh, three co-hosts are incredible. Our chemistry is great. Everyone has, like, a different thing a different lane, if you will. You've got Nate Burleson, who is literally the coolest person I've ever met. Like, he's good at everything. It's almost annoying. Um, Kyle Brandt, coming from the Jim Rome show, uh, West Coast, just moved here. So he's constantly, like, I mean, the the clear uh, disrepresentation of a West Coast, L.A., Orange County kid moving to the East Coast is pretty hilarious as well. Um, and then you've got Peter Schrager, who loves, like, the drama, the backstory of things. He's got, like, all the GM. Uh, front office stuff locked down. So everyone has a kind of a different area that they're passionate about, and we just really like to bring it every morning. Every time I watch you guys also, you guys seem to really... One of the things that I enjoy when I watch a show, because, I mean, listen, we all love sports, but it's nice to see when people who are talking about sports really enjoy what they're talking about. And, like, for example, you guys doing the, you know, build the best quarterback, build the best wide receiver tomorrow you're doing the build the uh, your perfect running back yes you know, to, to me all that stuff is just fascinating because i mean come on who who expected nate to really bring up steve largent for the best hands he was going back and forth about it too he's like whatever i say i'm gonna get i'm gonna get you know grief from <laughs> i can't answer this question correctly so uh, yeah it's definitely been very interesting uh you know yesterday i picked peyton manning's brain over tom brady's and they worked in new england for a couple of years, so I got some grief for that. So it's been a lot of fun and to get, you know, Eli Manning's picks and Rashad Denning today with the Giants uh, gave his opinions as well. It's been a lot of fun. We're building the Voltron, the perfect guy at each position. So it's that kind of stuff. It's kind of a creative look. Uh, you know, we'll hit you with the news and notes throughout the hour, of course, getting you guys what's going on. That trade happened uh, right before we ended the show today. So you guys got yourselves a Beckham, huh? Yeah, just not the right Beckham, K. <laughs> that yeah. was what I said earlier in the show. Hey, we got Beckham. Oh, that Beckham. I'm not sassy. Why is that? I'm getting all, I'm looking at Twitter, and people aren't as excited as I am. I'm pretty excited about this. Well, he is six foot five, and there are people that are excited about it. They also see the baggage that comes with it. And I said earlier in the program that I think, you know, we, we basically moved one person's, do you want this? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Should I still eat this? Is it moldy? Uh, here, you try it. You know, I mean, it's basically, yeah. that was my analysis. I, I'd love to hear yours. I mean, sometimes it, I feel like a change of scenery is a good thing. This guy is a towering, huge target. And you put him with Jordan Matthews, who's another big target. Those are two big guys that Bradford and company can throw to. You know, you need those guys. Ruben Randall, underwhelming. You guys have watched him for four years up in New York, or up with the Giants, kind of underwhelmed um, from a production standpoint. So, you know, I mean, could it really be worse? He's got an opportunity to make an impact. Jordan Matthews on the mend. Why not? And just to put a wrap on... Uh... Beckham, that if he does play, then the starting two wide receivers could be 6'3 and 6'5, and I saw on Twitter yeah. that uh, four of the six starting cornerbacks for the Cowboys, Giants, and Redskins are all under six feet, so size does matter. I think the opportunity is there. He's got a chance for some targets. You know, obviously, you do look at the, the baggage part. You can see the negative part. Why did the Titans want to give him up? It's not like they had a, you know, a, lot, a ton of depth at wide out down there, but you never know. Change of scenery might be just the ticket. So you've uh, listened to me enough to know that I have just enough information to be dangerous, but also to be last <laughs> in my fantasy football league. Help me, Kay. Okay. Kay Adams, help me, Obi-Wan. You're my only hope. Please help I me. I mean, hopefully you're not drafting yet. You have to draft after the third preseason game. That would be your first mistake. Oh, no, 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 no drafting yet. Usually it's a Labor okay. Day Monday draft, so we're actually so late that last year my steal, my one genius pick, was James Jones. Like the day of the draft, I saw wow. that he had joined the Packers, and I said, ooh, he could turn out to be something. Bing, pluck. But it's a 16-team, 17-league draft. So pe keep in mind wow. people like – Kenyon Barner will be taken or like really <laughs> deep guys. So come on, Kay. Need your help. Save me, Kay. 
I mean, what are you looking for? Are you just looking for a couple of sleepers? Yeah, sleepers. Yeah, some, you know, some guys that I've been really, uh, really high on that have been had glowing reports coming out of training camp and really just preseason action, even though it's early. I love Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas at the Saints. He's gaining some steam. He's moving up the draft. For his ADP is kind of uh, on the ups, but he's you know second rounder. Drew Brees is your quarterback. He scored 18 touchdowns over two seasons uh, at Ohio State. Looks good in preseason, caught four of six or 46 yards. Marcus Colston is gone. Drew Brees led the league in passing last season. He'll do it again this year. Kobe Fleener is there. Do I think he's you know, on the same level as better than Ben Watson was last season? No. So I really think Michael Thomas, and this guy's talking about big targets like Oriel Green Becca. Michael Thomas, he's 6'3", and looks great at camp. Uh, another guy I really like is Tyler Boyd, Bengals rookie wideout. Keep an eye on this guy because. You know, they need somebody to throw to. Eifert won't be there for the beginning of the season. You've got no more Sanu. He's gone. No Marvin Jones. He's gone. Who's Danny Dalton going to throw to? He's a Pittsburgh product. He's getting lots of praise from Marvin Lewis. So I think Tyler Boyd's a guy that you can get late as well. We're talking with Kay Adams. She's one of the co-hosts of Good Morning Football on NFL Network each morning at 7 a.m. Kay, sticking with the fantasy football, I want to ask you because – you know, for me, in a lot of the leagues that I end up playing in, you know, you do have defenses and you do have those situations where how much value is there in a defense? Because you saw years ago with the Seahawks, if you had the Seahawks defense, but you had some weaknesses elsewhere that kind of covered the gaps. So are there any defenses this year that can do that for anybody? Um, I never draft defenses early. I like to stream them. I call it defensive bingo, totally based on that. Because by week five, you know you're th- you're starting everybody up against the Saints. That's what happened last season, right? You're starting everybody up against the Chargers on defense. Even in preseason action, you can see those polls. Look at the Titans running game, this exotic smash mouth that they want, did against the Chargers defense. So it's easy to exploit. It's, it kind of doesn't make sense to waste a draft on a Seattle, on a Cardinals. I understand that maybe there's peace of mind and less work involved. We can really exploit all of that. Look what Daily Fantasy has done in that respect. So, I mean, I like the Eagles defense, honestly. Like, if you're looking at them, there's improvements there. They've looked great so far. And if you look at their week one matchup, who do they have but RG3 and the Browns? So, RG3 and the Browns without Josh Gordon sounds like a pretty appetizing matchup. If I was in a draft, I would take the Eagles last round, and then maybe I'd see who's playing the Browns or a weak offensive team the next week. <laughs> I like that. I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I, likes that. <laughs> I said on Good Morning Football this week that I'm drafting the Eagles defense for week one because they've got the Browns. I know that. Well, you just made a lot of Eagles fans and fantasy football fans happy by saying <laughs> that. Kay, if I could ask you, you know, a little bit more on the, you know, the non-specific fantasy side, how did you end up getting become such an expert on fantasy football? Because, you know, we see so many people on TV, no offense, but you're a lot younger than a lot of the other fantasy football experts who are out there. Yeah. So, you know, how did you rise to where you are now? I, I hate the word expert or, you know, sensation, guru, whatever you want to call it. I, I'm against that. I'm really passionate about it. And I always, I mean, I like to talk trash. I'm really competitive, and I love football. And that's pretty much been it. I have a brother who's two years older than me that had me playing fantasy football with him since I was little. Um, and so I got really into it. I tried to fantasy baseball for a while. I, I know that, you know, you've got Chase Outley coming back. I actually listened to some of your show a little bit earlier. I remember being in college at Mizzou and drafting Chase Outley and having him go bananas in 2008 with, like, over 30 touchdowns or over 30 home runs. Uh, so I was competitive, and, uh, and it kind of worked out for me. Sirius XM welcomed me in uh, as a member of, of their show when they launched their fantasy sports channel, and it kind of grew from there. Kay Adams is with us talking NFL football. And, Kay, uh, if you mentioned Mizzou, I apologize for Scott Frost and Chevin Wiggins. <laughs> I was in Nebraska at that time. Uh, that, was, that, that was not my fault. I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, I forgive you. But the whole state of Nebraska <laughs> certainly cheered when that happened. Uh, hey, so Mizzou, uh, so you do have some more knowledge on Beckham than just your average Joe or Jill. Um, yeah, college football was never my thing. I liked I liked NFL uh, and, and the MLB a lot better. But yeah, I mean, this is, I, I just think the potential is there, right? We've seen guys who start have a rough start um, and changes of scenery and different situations and maturity and and reps and just you know you never know. Don't discount a guy, uh, and especially like from a fantasy football perspective, which is pretty much where I come from. The value you can get, Doriel Green Beckham right now, you got him in the 13th round when he was in Tennessee. You're getting him in the same round now, and, and he might have an opportunity there. So the, the risk is minimal. 
when you look at the move that they made today and you look at the Eagles, and let's talk about them specifically, who are some of the people on, on the Philadelphia Eagles roster that you think have the potential to have a big season? Because I know a lot of people out here are really sweating it out. They're, they're worried about the wideout position for sure and maybe think the tight ends might be a place where they can get some Yeah. Value. So I and I've, ta- I've talked him up on Good Morning Football. If you guys uh, want to hang out with us in the morning, 7 a.m. Eastern uh, the, on the NFL Network, Zach Ertz. He turned it up last season. The Eagles have over 100 targets. Uh, towards the end of the season, he was the main guy. I think he could easily lead this team in receiving. That's not a bad thing. You can get him in like the 10th or 11th round in fantasy drafts right now. I would pass on Gronk, who I think is overvalued this season. I would pass on a guy like Greg Olson, who's also going really high. Jordan Reed, all those guys. Grab Zach Ertz. 11th round, he's got upside, he's going to score touchdowns, uh, he's going to be the go-to guy there. Well, nobody's he's, more... He was really impressive <laughs> last year, he, given the opportunity. He is, and nobody's more happy than a guy that's got his uh, girl by his side. Julie Johnston was the celebrity at Eagles camp yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, she didn't want to be there that early because that meant the U.S. women's soccer team was knocked out, but uh, happy wife, yes. happy life, right? Or happy fiance, happy life, something like that. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, real quick, I also wanted to ask you, you know, in your role, you you know, you have to get up early. You have to, so how do you keep up with the NFL preseason games that are all at night when you're having to do the show in the morning? Game Pass. NFL Game Pass is has been a godsend. It's been incredible. Uh, I'm in bed. I have to, like, wind down at, like, 9 o'clock. I'm trying to sleep by 10. I'm up at, like, 3.45. And then I just, I research it. I live and breathe it right now. But football season, you know, it's a short, amazing, incredible, action-filled season worth every second. So, 16 or 17 weeks of presence. That's basically the way I look at it. That's Did why it's the number it? one like, season. Aren't you guys so excited to wake up and have a trade? Like, that's incredible. It's actually... We like when they happen between 2 and 6. <laughs> 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 or maybe at one thirty, so we have a little bit of prep time. I hear time. you. <laughs> I hear you. Kay Adams, she's the co-host of Good Morning Football on NFR Network. Kay, and also talk about the preseason. What have you taken away from week one so far that has stood out to you, whether it's a specific player or a specific moment so far? Yeah, you know, preseason action really gets going in, in week three. That's when I sort of perk up. But these quarterback situations have been great. What stood out to me is that running backs are having a lot of success. You know, what the Titans are doing, uh, what's you know, DeMarco Murray down there, uh, and the rookie Derrick Henry. I don't know if DeMarco Murray is a sensitive subject there uh, in Atlantic City, but, you know, those those sort of things are very interesting to me, to see what Carlos Hyde is doing out on the West Coast. There's a guy named DeAndre Washington, who's a really nice compliment to, uh, to Latavius Murray in Oakland. These are all guys that, you know, I look at everything from a fantasy perspective. Like, I'm competitive. It's, it's game on. Any edge I can get is great. So this kid out of uh, Texas Tech, he's catching things. He, he looks really great. I think he's going to have a huge role. So that's always interesting. The drama's interesting. We all have hard knocks, you know, guys getting cut and so on. So it's a great visit. What a time to be alive, guys. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Okay, you mentioned DeMarco Murray. I was just going to say, you know, uh, how, much, how many carries is Derrick Henry going to take away from me? Because Derrick Henry looked great the other night, too. He does look great, but let's remember that was up against the San Diego run defense. I'm very curious to see how they work this exotic smash run out against the Panthers this week and then the Raiders next week. So that's certainly something I'll be keeping an eye on. I think he has a role. I think DeMarco Murray, I mean, he's coming off of fresh-ish legs from last season. It's hard to say. I think he maybe has something to prove this year, and he seems to be having a great camp down there. So we'll see. Well, okay, we will be keeping an eye on NFL Network each morning from 7 to 10 as you're one of the co-hosts of the show. We really appreciate it. And my you. new favorite host of the show, by the way. <laughs> I'm just going to insert that in. I really enjoyed oh, it, Kay. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'd love to come on again. We'll have, once you draft your team, I'll come on and I'll size it up for you. How Thank that? you. I will hold you to that. God bless you. Okay. At Hey K Sounds Adams. Great. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, sounds well, like a night, plan. Guys. About time for me to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, good night, right? <laughs> good night, good night. Have a good one. <laughs> See you, Kay. Take care, Kay.